Let's attack her. Oh, and let's surprise her that way. No way. A no hit. Let's go, baby. A no hit with the new weapon. Hello, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I am going to show you my first DLC build without giving you any spoilers at all. A great feature of this build is that you can start crafting it as soon as you start playing the DLC. So you won't need to progress a lot to get this weapon and to get the armor set that I am going to be using for this build. I will show you the most important aspects of the build, the stats, the equipment, and I will explain why you should be using this build in the DLC and why is it good to be used in the DLC without giving any spoilers or without giving major spoilers. However, I haven't finished the DLC yet, so I will ask you to not write any spoilers in the comments as well, because I haven't uh, finished it yet. So let's begin with the video guys. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Here I am in a very early area of the DLC, you will be reaching this in like the 5 first minutes of the DLC, so don't worry, this is not the any relevant. The weapon that we are covering today is the backhand blade. It is called backhand because it's, uh, well, this weapon works uh, very similar to a corpse sword. It's not as fast as a corpse sword moveset, but it is really fast and the best part of this weapon is the skill. It's some sort of evasive maneuver that ends up in a in a very powerful piercing attack. It deals a decent amount of stance damage and it's pierce damage basically, so it's going to penetrate heavy armors. It's going to be effective against a lot of enemies. The important part here is to build up damage by using the R1 uh, moveset. This is the R1 moveset, it's not power stance. You only need to pick one and if you two-hand it, you will get two at the same time. And the R1 moveset is pretty fast, it's very decent to use in a dexterity build, which is something that I will address later. But initially, you need to know that this is a very good weapon for the DLC, especially because we are new players, and as new players, we have to explore. And the main difference between this build with my previous builds, where I know where to, where to find the bosses, what areas of the game I can skip, or shortcuts to take. In this case, as new players of the DLC, we have to explore the game we have to be looking for uh, areas we are going to be facing traps new enemies and these weapons are perfect for that new scenarios because they are very fast they deal a lot of damage and the skill is very good because you can spam it and you will be dodging basically you can see this weapon from two angles it is a perfect maneuver to attack uh, surprisingly or it is a perfect maneuver to dodge multiple attacks so yeah basically i recommend you to use this build because it's perfect to face the new scenarios as new players that don't know the dlc now talking about the heavy attacks they are very good as well but i will not recommend you to use the heavy attacks as much as the r1 moves which i consider is the most important feature of this weapon it's really fast and it will allow you to build up damage with the correct talismans and of course the skill is uh, the best so now let's quickly talk about the equipment we are going to be using the backhand blade on plus 25 with the blind spot dash of war which is the default skill of this weapon on the king affinity if you pay attention to the stats of this weapon you will notice that it scales s with dexterity so you are going to have a huge ar for a weapon that is really really fast and the best part is that the stats we are going to use are pretty much the same than the previous uh, build but these ones are better and most optimal for the dlc as a secondary weapon we are going to use the bolt of grand size because i've been testing it and it's very effective in this new expansion we need the god slayer seal on plus 25 to boost the power of the buffs that we are going to be using in our main weapon. And I'm going to be using the Oath Seeker Knight Armor. This is a new DLC armor set that can be obtained very early, so don't consider it a spoiler. It's very, very beautiful, but you will get it really fast as soon as you start playing it. That's why I still have this one, because I haven't found uh, many other armor sets yet. But yeah, I will show you how to get it in a few seconds, alright? Now, these are the best talismans we can use for this build. We are going to be using the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Millicent's Prosthesis, and the Dragon Crest Grey shield talisman as you can see my talisman setup is a little bit more passive compared to my other talisman setups and i am doing this because the dlc is actually really hard you will need to use a lot of the new resources that the dlc is giving you to be able to survive however this talisman is going to be very helpful for you the rodent windsor insignia is a very good alternative as well if you don't want to use the shard of alexander and if you don't want to use this one or if you don't have it the lord of blood's exultation is a very good option as well i will tell you why in a few seconds in our flask of wondrous physic we are going to be using the thorny crack tier and the flame shrouding crack tier these are going to be the most effective to deal damage
damage, this is the same tier setup that we had in the previous build. And of course, don't forget your pickle torten legs. You might think that these items are not that useful, but believe me guys, you will need a fast recovery speed of stamina. Now I'm going to take a look to the stats and here you will find a small spoiler. So if you really don't want to know anything about the DLC, skip the video to this point. The reason why some of my stats look yellow is because of the scatter tree blessing, the new upgrade system of the DLC. With this new item, you will increase your attack power and your defense power by 5% with each tier. I'd say that this is not that important for attack power, but it's really useful when it comes to defense. So don't worry about the location of these items, you will find them very soon and... Now going to the regular stats, we have 50 on Vigor. In my previous build I had 40, but we really need 50 on Vigor, believe me, 50 on Vigor at least guys. We are going to be using 25 on mine, it's a really good amount of mine to use our buffs and to use our skill a lot, and we really need a lot of endurance on this new expansion, so I am going to be using 45 at least. We only need 20 points on strength, cause this is mostly a dexterity build, and of course we are going to be using 80 points on dexterity that way we will get the best scale values from the backhand blade and we are going to be using 40 points on fate and a minimum of 10 points on arcane golden vow and flame grant me strength are going to be the main boss for this build why suddenly i am choosing flame grant me strength over howl of shabriri howl of shabriri is the best body buff to deal damage but the problem here with howl of shabriri is that you are going to take more damage when using it specifically 30 percent more damage this is no problem in the base game even in new game plus 7 but this is a significant problem for the new dlc cause the enemies deal a lot of more damage than in the base game flame grant me strength boosts your physical and fire damage by 20 percent for 30 seconds and it increases your stamina regeneration speed as well so it is a perfect body buff cause we are going to be dealing mostly fire damage with our main weapon buffs which are going to be blood flame blade and black flame blade blood flame blade is going to be the most important for two main reasons with this one we will be able to deal fire damage and and build up bleed really good and that is perfect for a weapon that deals multiple hits in a few seconds this combined with the fantastic ash of war this weapon has it is going to be a tremendous destruction for any enemy we have in front and black flame blade is going to be a little bit harder to use because we have to one hand our weapon to to cast it and then we have to two hand or weapons again to use it and it lasts only like 10 seconds it's a very fast uh, buff but it can be useful in certain scenarios or in a very very quick fight now a very good advantage of using the kin affinity is that we can buff our weapon with any grease we want so if we want to use these blades to deal to build a frostbite we can buff the weapons with frost and we will be able to deal a tremendous amount of physical damage and build the frostbite really quick as well so now let's quickly test this build on the base damage and then i will show you the location of the armor and the main weapon of this build so what it is going to be better to test it than the uh, hardest boss of the base game right you first have to use golden bow then your optional pickle turtleneck completely optional i like it then your physic then blood flame blade and then flame grant me strength to hand your weapon and send it guys okay guys let's go with millennium Okay, the trick here is to attack with the R1 attack. It's a lot easier than using the skill on this boss specifically. But here we can go a little bit crazy though. No, she's gonna go with the waterfall dance there. No, she's not going with that. That's perfect. As you can see, we're dealing a lot of damage, guys. So, it is fantastic. Oh, you are dead right here. No, bad idea, Malenia. That's bad. Oh, no, that's... Oh, no way, dude. <laughs> I had already timed that thing, bro. No way, dude. Look at this crit hit, guys. Oh, that was beautiful. And now let's... Let's attack her. Oh, and let's surprise her that way. No way. A no hit? Let's go, baby. A no hit with the new weapon. <laughs> let's go, guys. But I really struggle with these guys sometimes. So let's give it a heavy attack at the start and let's see how it evolves. Oh jeez, dude. Hey, wait a little bit for the dodge. It's a it's a dodge and attack, bro. Here we can dodge that and attack. Ooh, we dodge that and attack. Okay, let's wait for that attack. Now nah, we can dodge the swing so beautifully, bro. Look at this. It's a dodge and attack thing. Oh, I almost dodged that one. Let's see if I dodge it. I dodged that bro, let's go. So here we are going to do the typical go around thing. Oh no way, I cancelled that thing. It's over for you bad boy. And let's dodge this, let's see if I can dodge this. 
Oh, no way, dude. <laughs> These things are beautiful, bro. And I was, I, I took a few hits, dude. That's, that's amazing. It is amazing because I lost the effect of the Ritual Sword Talisman and it was performing good still. So yeah, guys, this is a very powerful build for the DLC. I don't want to extend the video necessarily. So now I will show you where to get the weapon and the armor set. If you don't want to watch uh, where to get it, it is okay. But I can tell you that it is nothing very important. It is nothing very... Wow, my God, you spoiled me so bad, Carlos. No, it's something very simple. So feel safe uh, that I will not the spoilio in a significant way. Okay guys, now I will show you how to get the backhand blade, which is the main weapon of this build. You will have to be located in one of the main uh, graces of this new expansion. It's one of the earliest ones, so don't worry about it. It is named Scorch Rings. You will find it as soon as you start playing the, the new DLC, so don't worry, it's nothing important. And you will have to ride your horse all the way up here. Here you will be able to find the backhand blade. So now let's do it. So you will have to go all the way up here. Just ride straight to it. It will take a few seconds though. And there you will find uh, the backhand blade. Why it is not here? Because I have it on my hands, dude. That's why it is not here. But here you will find it, guys. Now, the armor set is going to be located in the upper part from when you start the DLC. In the exact point where you start the DLC, in the cliff that is above you, there is where the armor set is going to be located. As you, as you see, my character is right here. But in order to get here, you have to explore a little bit more. So I will show you the road, but I will not tell you anything important about it. And I will not show you uh, what is in the road. So first, you have to go all the way up here to the first grace that I showed you previously. And you have to follow this path and you will have to follow this route. You will have to go all the way up here and you will explore all this area until you reach this point. So basically you just have to go around all the way around to get this uh, to get this armor set. As you can see, I am only showing you the route, but I am not going to show you anything important here. But the first side of grace, it is like surrounding the, the map to get at this point and it is located above you. So basically you will start down here. Here is where you start the DLC and there is where the armor set it is going to be located. And that is going to be it for this video guys. Remember that if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to this channel. That way you will support me a lot. And of course, let me know in the comment section what do you think of this build. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I will see you in the next one.